Hi Booktube, this is Leo from A Little Book Life and I'm really excited for this video because it is the result of reading the first five novels of Anita Bruckner in the project that Sarah from Hardcover Hearts and I started five months ago and during which we plan to body read all 24 novels from this magnificent writer that we both discovered in the beginning of this year. This is an in-deep conversation video, a format developed by Sarah that offers the opportunity for in-depth discussions of books that require more thoughtful approaches. And Anita Bruckner's novels definitely apply for this kind of approach. This is a response to Sarah's first video. I advise you to check out her video first if you haven't watched it yet. Sarah, in her turn, will respond in a few days to this video with her final thoughts. So please check back on her channel. Sarah asked me some questions in her video. The first one being, what made you want to read her work with me and take on a project that will take a little over two years to complete? Well, you and I connected through Anita Bruckner's work when you told me about how you had read your first Bruckner novel, Hotel du Lac, and how you loved it. I told you that I had her debut novel, A Start in Life, waiting to be read, and showed my copy, which happened to be the exact same edition you herself had. And we decided right then and there to body read that one. During that body read, it turned out that we were both blown away by her writing. And a start in life being her debut, we planned to go on from there and read all of her 24 novels in publication order together, reading one book every month. I think we both felt that we had stumbled upon a remarkable and unique writer. The fact that this project will take a little over two years, there is an extra 25th one at the end that was only published as an ebook. Only enhances the fun because we had done several body reads before and I knew how well we click as for the sort of literature we mostly like, our pace of reading and also the commitment we share for undertaking a thing like this together. Then you asked, please share with us your thoughts on each of the books, including any passages or sentences that stood out specifically, but ones that won't spoil the story. Okay, first of all, in general, Anita Bruckner uses only a limited range of literary forms. She writes straightforward. She does not experiment. Her narrative is strictly chronological and written mostly from one point of view. There is no wide angle, but rather a close-up view. Her, sto her stories are set in traditional English society, where class is accepted and never challenged. There is not much action. Her novels are character-driven instead of plot-driven. The plot is actually minimal. There is not much dialogue. The focus is on the character's reflections. The tone is understated, never vindictive. The prose is precise, stripped of all unnecessary or superfluous words. Writers who Bruckner admired herself, like Jane Brees, also wrote that way. And this is exactly what makes Anita Bruckner's prose so very beautiful. She conveys emotions without descriptive emotional writing. The main character is usually lonely and has a feeling of misplacement, like Anita Bruckner felt herself during her life. Born and raised within a Jewish community, but never having been taught Hebrew, Within a family that was from Polish origin, but tried hard to become English, even changing their surname from Bruckner into Bruckner. Name changing occurs in Bruckner's writing also many times, 
characters are sometimes called by a different name by some, indicating that they have two lives and are never fully at home in either one. Bruckner said in an interview with Olga Kenyon, I have never learned the custom of the country because we were Jews, tribal and alien. Anita Bruckner was next to a fictional author, a writer in art history, and was an international authority in the field of 18th and 19th century French art. Most readers won't know or notice, but it seems that for the trained eye, many of the settings in her novels are actually depictions of scenes in famous works of art. Now to the books themselves. The first book, her debut, A Start in Life, in America also published as The Debut, first and foremost blew me away because of her writing. Just the opening sentence is a jewel in itself. Dr. Weiss, at 40, knew that her life had been ruined by literature. It drew me in like a magnet. In the next paragraph, the main character remembers a scene from her childhood where she has been read to from the story Cinderella. In the story that unfolds here, Ruth Weiss's story and the Cinderella fairy tale are in opposition to each other. Ruth is an only child, like so many of Bruckner's protagonists, and has had a childhood only surrounded by adults, thus making her an outsider from the start. It soon turned out that sentence after sentence were of the kind of beauty as the opening line, like her appearance and character were exactly halfway between the 19th and the 20th centuries, or about a long married couple, Helen would retire to bed, where she knew she looked her best. George, harassed, would join her for a drink. Bruckner's prose is never dramatized or embellished. It is devoid of sentimentality, but it is still warm and very precise. Less is more. And I discovered the lovely, biting, humoristic side of Bruckner, which shows in sentences like Mrs. Cutler said nothing. It disgusted her that Helen should still be thinking about sex. She had got over that sort of thing herself. Or, once disturbed, he saw no reason why other people shouldn't be. Then I came upon my first encounter with the Bruckner woman, the type of woman who seems to turn up in every Bruckner novel so far, and about who Sarah has already told in her video. Here she was, the well-educated woman, full of love of literature, like Bruckner herself, whose father set her to read Dickens, all Dickens novels, from the age of seven, because he didn't understand the English, and took Dickens novels to be true pictures of English life, as Anita, as Anita Bruckner told in an interview. Women not succeeding in love, but finding a way forward in the end by finding happiness in other things than a love life. Even when there are no truly happy endings here, her main character is in the end always resilient. For me, there was a strong sense of recognition, a connection with this main character. Although I myself have had a fulfilled love life for a long time, had several relationships, among them a very long-lasting one, I have in the end become rather disillusioned and, like all the main characters in Bruckner's novels, come to terms with living on my own now since several years and not actively seeking a love life anymore. And like the Bruckner woman, I find happiness in things outside of a love relationship. Friends, family, dogs, 
culture, music, but most of all, literature. Which does not mean being lonely. It is a kind of acceptance and realism that paves the path for a certain kind of happiness. In this I felt a sense of recognition in Anita Bruckner's novels, and I have a strong feeling that Anita Bruckner herself was someone who was the same. The second novel was Providence, in which the main character, Kitty Mall, is an outsider who wants to fit in in English society, mainly by marrying an insider. She is in love with a married man, which leads, like mostly, of course, to nothing. The central question the main character silently asks herself is, am I desired? Bruckner writes about the painfulness of a one-sided love affair. And again, beautiful sentences. Years of living with her mother had made her adept at keeping bad news to herself. Or she gave herself over to the business of anticipation, for she suspected that she might need to become rather good at doing so. When reading the third novel, Look at Me, it, there was another resemblance with my own life. The main character, Francis, works in a medical library, which was my first job also. The wonderful thing about the Bruckner woman is that she appears in every novel in a slightly different version. The yearning to belong, to be accepted, to be noticed, which is always present in the Bruckner woman, is e exceptionally strong in this one, and is strongly reflected in the title of the book. In a former relationship with a married man, Francis, the main character, was the ultimate outsider, as a mistress, never meant to exist. She is a writer, because writing is a way of, and I quote, reminding people that I am here. Now she is swept away, one could say, by the successful and beautiful and hedonistic couple Nick and Alex. And she is the perfect catch for them, because she is single, lonely, yearns to be seen, to be like them, and is living alone in this huge apartment about which she tells about her evening routine. I let myself into the flat and I am in for the rest of the evening. I have something to eat and then I usually try to write. In that way I manage to get rid of the rest of the day. And it is like a long old age. Forever forlorn and waiting for the end. But once again, she eventually realizes what she's doing, stops and finds her way forward. The Bruckner woman may appear sad and weak, but turns out to be strong in the end. These were the first three novels that Anita Bruckner wrote. In an interview, she said that they were very autobiographical and that she wanted to step away from that. She also said about this third novel, Look at Me is a very depressed and debilitated novel, and it's the one I regret. When I published it, a very old friend of my mother's summoned me and said, You are getting yourself a bad reputation as a lonely woman. Stop it at once. She was right. It sticks. And indeed, by writing her next one, Hotel du Lac, she took a very different turn. It's her best-known novel, which won the Man Booker Prize, and it is the only one that was made into a highly applauded movie for British, for British uh, television. This time, she left her setting of the Bruckner woman, in her apartment and the academic work environment and turns to the much larger scale of a hotel in Switzerland where a group of guests stay off-season. The Bruckner woman is this time 
someone who has been forced by her friends and family to leave England for some time because of something she did. The reader only finds out what that was when the story has progressed quite far. The element of surprise, of suspense even, is new. The protagonist's supposedly wrongdoing is kept a mystery for a long time while she stays in a hotel at a fork covered lake. Very symbolic. And its plot moves as little as the fork. Also, the other guests at the hotel are mysterious. And once again, the thing the protagonist has done in England has to do with love. And once again, our hero comes out strong and independent. Hotel du Lac is about making choices. The main protagonist has to make an important choice twice. One has to do with why she had to leave England for some time. The second one she will be confronted with in the last part of the novel. Although I really like this one also, and despite it winning the Man Booker Prize, which was of course glorious for Anita Bruckner, it was not one of my favorites so far. There were less amazing sentences, and it felt that she was concentrating more on storytelling. Two lines in Hotel du Lac are essential for Anita's, Anita Bruckner's writing, though, I think. You are wrong to think that you cannot live without love, Edith. No, I am not wrong. I mean that I cannot live well without it. But then, there came another surprise. This time, a big one. Her fifth novel, Family and Friends. A family chronicle, inspired by an actual group photo of Bruckner's own family. The novel starts with the photograph, zooms in on Sofka, the nominating matriarch of the family. Here is Sofka are the first words of the novel. And then, in the course of the novel, the perspective moves from child to child as they go through life. And they all fail to live up to their mother's expectations, which are so high that she started burdening them already at the beginning of their lives. Sofka, I quote, named her sons after kings and emperors. I think Bruckner's focus on storytelling and plot really took off here. And to do this, the story of a family in under 200 pages is, I think, an amazing achievement and a master proof in concise and precise writing. This was my favorite. At first, I thought Bruckner had abandoned the Bruckner woman. But then she appeared once more. This time she is Mimi one of the daughters, who is certain that she is being loved by a man only to be let down, after which she decides to turn away from romantic love. An example of Anita Bruckner's fantastic sentences here is, his character, in fact, will be a burden to him rather than an asset, but that is the way with good characters. Or, Evie may not be feminine, but she is abundantly female. And in this placid landscape, Dolly, the lady of the gardenias, is monstrously unassimilable. Okay, that was a long answer. And Sarah's next question is, which of her characters have touched you the most? Mimi. In family and friends, definitely. The scene in Paris where she gets so disillusioned and let down was heartbreakingly beautiful. Paris, by the way, is always there at some point in her novels. Anita Bruckner herself lived there for three years, doing research for her doctoral dissertation. In her novels, Paris is the antipole of London. In Paris there is escape from the obligations and the pull from family. There is freedom and the chance to live one's own life. In contrast to London, 
the suffocation awaits. Like Bruckner herself, the main character in A Start in Life returns to London to look after her ailing parents, leaving her newfound independence behind. And then Sarah's last question was, knowing what you know of what she has already done, any ideas of what the next five books will bring us? I really don't know, Sarah. But I hope to be as surprised as an, by Anita Bruckner as I was these last few times. I do think, however, that we haven't seen the last of the Bruckner woman. I do know that a few novels further on from where we are now, the first male protagonist will appear, which made Peter Kemp, who is a fan of her writing and a reviewer for the Sunday Times, write that he wanted to stamp out this novel. So strong was his attachment to her female main characters. And there will be a novel in which the impact of the Holocaust will play a central role. Okay, those were my answers to uh, Sarah's questions. And now it's my turn to ask you, Sarah, some questions. Um, the first one. I told you about how I recognized myself in the Bruckner woman. I wonder in what way you, being a woman yourself, can connect to her. And I am also curious how you look at her from a feministic point of view. And my second question is, what is your favorite Bruckner novel so far and why? Also, in her novels, clothes seems seem to play uh, an important role, especially in Providence. What do you think is the significance of clothing in her work? And also, there seems to be a link between food and love in her books. What are you th your thoughts on that? And the last one, um, and uh, I'm very, very interesting, interested in uh, what your answer will be. If Anita Bruckner would still have lived today and you would have dinner with her, what would you have liked to talk about with her? So, yeah, I am very excited about this project, like I already uh, said, and I am really looking forward to reading all the 19 other novels that are waiting for us so far. This is a marvelous project and Anita Bruckner is just a magnificent writer. To all of you who are uh, watching this and have never read Anita Bruckner, I highly recommend her to you. Not, not just a single one, all of, uh, any of them. Uh, the ones uh, that we have read so far, I love them all. Uh, family and Friends is obviously my favorite, but for everyone there is another favorite. So Sarah may have a quite different favorite. So just pick any one of them and read her. She very well deserves to be read widely. Okay, that was it. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to check in regularly on Sarah's channel to see her final response and wrap-up video this series. Thank you. Bye-bye.